everyone and welcome to another video. I'm Simply G and today I'm going to be showing off the entirety of my anime and manga collection. Um, hopefully this video shouldn't be too long especially compared to some of the other complete collection videos I've done in the past but this will include all of my anime, manga, um, light novels of all various genres, demographics etc. So rather than spend too much time on this intro I'll get straight into it and I hope you guys enjoy. So on the top shelf of this bookcase we have two completed manga series, the first being Nosca of the Valley of the Wind, the book box set of that put out by Viz, and then the 1 to 10 volumes of Barefoot Gen, another hardcover release by Last Gasp. In between that I have the 1 8 scale of Alvis from Last Exile, a I guess nowadays sort of unknown steampunk um, sci-fi series. It's really wonderful, love it, and a really lovely figure for that series. So on the top shelf of this first bookcase is all of my DVD sized anime box sets. Most of them are US releases, there's a couple um, Australian releases in there, and many that are Blu-ray and DVD inclusive, and some that I actually made myself. So from left to right we have Hell Girl that has all three seasons, Monster the Complete Series, Neon Genesis Evangelion the original as well as the two films, Antique Bakery, the two seasons of Big Wind Up, the complete series of Rose of Versailles, Chai Furu, the first two seasons, The Eccentric Family, Last Exile, the original first season, My Little Monster, Spice and Wolf with both seasons, Mononoke, which actually includes that show as well as Samurai Horror Tales, Goblin Cat, and the first two or the two seasons of Mushishi on DVD in the Japanese limited box. On the next shelf of this bookcase are the beginnings of my Blu-ray limited edition box sets. These are Blu-ray sized. Some of them are Japanese imports, some of them are UK imports, some of them are Australian releases, and some again are US releases or also releases box sets that I've made myself. So the first is the Japanese release of Aka 13 as well as Durarara season 1. Season 2 is in that Japanese box set but contains the entirety of the Anaplex of America releases. Next to that is Escaflono, the TV show and movie. Next to that is Ping Pong. Moribito is a box set I made myself from Media Blasters Blu-rays. The UK Wolf's Reign and Oran High School Host Club. US release of Princess Jellyfish, the Australian release of From the New World, the Funimation releases of Shiki, Terror and Resonance, and Noragami Season 1 and 2, the Japanese Blu-ray set of Razafon, the show and the television, uh, the show and the film. Little Busters is another box set I made myself with both seasons and the OVAs, and then Gurren Logan with the entire show and the two movies. On this third shelf we have more Blu-ray size limited edition anime sets with Sailor Moon seasons 1 to 5, the entirety of the original classic Sailor Moon, aside from the last half of season 5 which hasn't been released yet in Australia. Next to that are some Funimation releases and apologies for the glare, but we have Level E, Michiko and Hotchin, Lupin the Third, a woman named Fujiko Mine, and Yuri on Ice, the last three of which were all done by the same director. Next to that is Land of the Lustrous, the steel book or steel case edition from Sentai Filmworks. Mawaru Penguin Drum, that's the Australian release in its entirety. All three seasons plus the movie collection of the free franchise. And finally for anime on this shelf we have the Tatami Galaxy and Naito's short walk-on girl as well as two prize figures also from free being Nagisa and Rei. On the next shelf we have the 1 8th scale of Sail Phantom Hive from Black Butler as well as the original DVD um, limited edition from Funimation just as kind of display. Um, really really wonderful figure, probably my favourite of 
the Black Butler figures that have been released. Next to that is the entirety of Fumi Yoshinaga's Oku, which is 1 to 16. That's been released in English. That series is complete in 19 volumes. I'm looking forward to the rest of it. And finally, we have a 1 8 scale figure of the Vocaloid Stardust, which is a Chinese Vocaloid. Um, this was made by Mythos and is really lovely. I don't really follow Vocaloid, but I really love her aesthetic. And so definitely bought her because I just really like how she looks. And it's a really lovely figure. Next are my standard Blu-ray sets, um, all Australian, US or UK releases, Amagi Brilliant Park, Angel Beats, Black Lagoon, Cowboy Bebop and the Film, Daily Lives of High School Boys, Season 1 of Darker Than Black, Deno Coil, The Devil is a Part-Timer, Devil Man, OVAs, Eden of the East and the Films, Two Seasons of Fate Zero, Two Seasons of Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, The First Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel Film, all three seasons, or the first three seasons of Full Metal Panic, which includes the season one, Fumofu and the second raid, Ghost Hound, Glass Mask OVAs, Golgo 13, season one and two of Haikyuu, the complete series of Hararaki Man, Humanity Has Declined, Hunter Hunter sets one to five plus the first film Phantom Rouge, Inuboku SS or Secret Service, Jormungan Season 1 and 2, um, Kase-san and Morning Glories OVA, Kids on the Slope, Kyosa Giga, Library Wars, the, f the show and the film, Lucky Star, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Mage, Maid, um, Baka Monogatari, Nise Monogatari and Neko Monogatari Black, Nozaki-kun or Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, the first three seasons and first film of My Hero Academia. Um, Muar or Myriad Colors Phantom World, which is another Kyoani work. And then Mysterious Girlfriend X is the last on this shelf. So a whole bunch of different things, some completed, some ongoing, and all series that I really love. My standard Blu-ray TV anime uh, continue on this shelf with the Natsume's Book of Friends film, Ephemeral Bond, Nichijo, Number 6, Pet Girl of Sakuroso, Princess Tutu, Psychic Detective Yakumo, Samurai Champloo, Shonen Maid, Skip Beat, Soul Eater, Steins Gate and the film, Sunday Without God, Tanaku-kun is always listless, the four that this boy can, uh, this boy can OVAs, so this boy can fight aliens, this boy caught a merman, this boy it suffers from crystallization, and this boy is a professional wizard. Um, Toa Kwan, OVA series, Suki ga Kire, Suratama, Ungo, the first four seasons of Utano Prince Sama, Violet Evergarden, the complete series and OVAs of The World God Only Knows, The World is Still Beautiful, Zammed, Yamada's First Time, and Yurikuma Arashi. On this shelf we have some completed manga series, volumes 1 to 8 of the cross game Omnibus, um, or Omnibuy, the entirety of Astro Lost in Space, volumes 1 to 5, Yu Yu Hakusho, volumes 1 to 19, and the three volume complete series of Genkaku Picasso. Next we have the Akira box set from Kodansha, all six volumes. Next to that is a Shintaro Kago art book. The first four seasons of Natsume's Book of Friends released by NIS America. The second season of Arakawa Under the Bridge. Bunny Drop, the complete series. Rohan at the Louvre, which is a one of the Louvre manga comics um, made specifically to be sold at the gallery. Next to that is the Shintaro Kago art box version of Dementia 21 with both books in there, as well as volume one of Showa A History of Japan by Shigeru Mizuki. And next to that is a whole bunch of different fan books and doujin and stuff that I just have right here. 
On the second shelf at the very top we have some Ava's Demon uh, art print of the titular Ava. Next or under that is a bunch of my complete best releases for um, various anime. So the original Full Alchemist, Full Alchemist Brotherhood, the Noitamine animation block, Space Brothers, Not Sonia's Book of Friends, and Soul Eater. These are all CDs with the openings and endings of these shows and that generally include a DVD or Blu-ray of the animation of each of these openings and endings. Um, they're quite common and are pretty popular in Japan. Below that we have the first half of my Studio Ghibli collection including Nosca of the Valley of the Wind, Lapta Castle in the Sky, Grave of the Fireflies, My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, Only Yesterday, Porco Rosso, Ocean Waves, Pom Poco, Whisper of the Heart, and Princess Mononoke. They are, um, they're organized in by date of release, so the oldest to the more recent. Beneath that is a 1 8th scale of Edward Elric, as well as I guess Alphonse Elric, or the, at least the armor that he inhabits. Um, this was a limited, I guess crowdfunded release that was only sold at certain websites and is personally my favorite of the scaled figures that we've gotten for this series, which is very near and dear to my heart, so I had to get them. Next are some regular CD releases for anime soundtracks and openings and endings. We have the first three sound, or we have the three soundtracks from the original Full Alchemist as well as um, Brotherhood. We have the two, op the first two openings for Free and Free Eternal Summer, as well as the theme from Free Starting Days, the first film, and then the ending songs for season one and season two of Free as well. Then we have the opening song for Hunter x Hunter, as well as the four disc release containing all five of the endings for that series. Next we have just a little bit of display here with the Time of Eve Eveland coffee can from the Time of Eve Kickstarter as well as just a general antique little pot from Japan. Um, yeah, you know, it just, it's just there because it looks good and I like it so that's, that's why that's there. On this shelf we have a bunch of the digital manga publishing releases of Fumi Yoshinaga titles. Yoshinaga is one of my personal, or maybe is my personal favorite mangaka. Um, so we have the entirety of Flower of Life 1 to 4, Antique Bakery 1 to 4, and the single volume of Garden Dreams. Next we have the Nendroids of Kenma and Kuro from the Nekoma team from Haikyuu. I don't own a lot of Nendroids aside from some from particular series. This is one of those series just because there's, I personally don't play around with Nendroids a whole lot. I don't mix and match them too much. So I find it's kind of a waste, but with Haikyuu, there's so many characters that I love and there's not very many scale figures of them or even prize figures of them that I really like very much. So I decided to get these ones and they're really cute and I really like them. So yeah, these two are right here. Next we have the Blu-ray box, uh, Japanese Blu-ray box of Chahaya Furu. This is just a display little piece. It does, in, it's supposed to hold the nine singles of the Japanese release. I don't have the, those. I have a couple of odd little singles from the series, but I bought this in Japan because I love this show and it hadn't been licensed at that point and it's a really lovely box and I wanted it for display so that's exactly what I did and it's it's nice it, it looks really good here. Next we have the CD boxes of the character songs from Free and Free Eternal Summer. Um, I mean it's basically exactly what uh, I said, so the Eternal Summer ones are the single character songs, the original free is the duets, which have characters, uh, songs between two characters. These were released all separately, like each CD was released on its own, and then if you bought 
all of them from a particular retailer, you could get these boxes. I bought them um, secondhand through Mandarake and other such places uh, because I'm a big free fangirl and so Kyoto Animation knows how to take my money. Next are some DVD OVAs and films and things like that. So we have Interstellar 5555, The Story of the Secret Star System, Please Save My Earth, um, Tabimachi Late Show, which is a Japanese release with English subtitles, Brave Story, Toward the Terror, the film, um, Yu Hakusho, the movie, and Ghost Hakusho um, OVAs, Spring and Chaos, and then the live action films of Ping Pong and Mushishi. Both are very good, um, very different, but very good. And basically, this is kind of where the last of these little odd OVAs and movies that are DVD only reside in my collection because generally I upgrade them or um, get, you know, different versions, uh, Blu-ray versions of things nowadays, but these are either too old to have any interest in a Blu-ray release or were never licensed, um, such as Tabi Machi Late Show. Or the Blu-ray release wasn't very good with Interstellar 5555. Five. Um, and so, yeah, I, it's just an odd little mix of stuff. But all of them are pretty, pretty good to watch. Brave Story is not a wonderful film, but it's a beautiful film. Um, so, yeah, a bit of, bit of a odds and ends ending with this shelf. Next we have the complete Neon Genesis Evangelion manga series as well as Shinji and Kaoru. These are the prize figures from when the third film came out. I really like them. I love paired figures like these two are. You'll see that a lot um, coming up. And I really like the manga for this series. I like franchises that have like various alternate iterations and, and interpretations of a similar story. So I really like Evangelion just generally as a franchise and I really like this manga. I think it's very good. It's an interesting spin on the original show and of course an interesting alternative to the rebuilt, reboot films that are currently coming out. Next, we have more Haikyuu Nendroids. These are all of Kurosano, the main team from the series. So we've got Suki, Yamaguchi, Tanaka, Hinata, um, Kageyama, Asahi, Sugawara, Daichi, and of course, last but not least, Nishinoya. So yeah, I mean, there's there's not really figures. Uh, there's prize figures of all of these characters, and a couple of them have had uh, scale-ish type of series or releases. But I I like having consistency when I buy figures of multiple characters from the same franchise, and so I got this these ones, and they're so cute. And they look really good displayed together like this. So yeah, Karasano. Next we have another paired figure. This is the one seventh scale of Makoto Tachibana and Haruka Nanose from Free, this franchise, but, but more specifically from the film High Speed Free Starting Days, which is when the characters are in middle school. I love this figure so much, not only because they, this is my ship. This is like my OTP. But also, it's it's done by Alter or Altair, their male uh, line. Really beautiful and is one of the most beautiful scenes of that film. We also have two prize figures from the show, um, similar to Nagisa and Rei. This is again Haru and Makoto, but their child, even younger versions. From when they were in elementary school and I just displayed them all together like this because I love them and I think it looks good. On the next shelf of this figure display we have Kino from Kino's Journey both the larger it's not quite a scale figure it's like a one-tenth scale of Kino and Hermes and then the Nendroid Petit of Kino and a similar but not actually um, like official release of a 
motorcycle that is basically Hermes, so that's why I display them together. I love Kino. I love Kino's Journey. The original series was one of my favorite of all time, like top 10 anime. And the newer release or the newer version is an interesting, like, again, alternative. I did like it. It's not my favorite as compared to the original, but I do love it. And it was very good. And I do encourage people to watch it. And it gave us this particular figure, the scale figure. So really, really happy, really happy with that. And it's a, it's a really nice scale, um, very detailed and again, sort of emblematic of some of the beautiful parts of that series with the red flowers. So yeah. Next on um, for figures, we have Yuri Katsuki and Viktor Nikiforov from Yuri on Ice fame, the main character and his partner slash coach, who are both professional figure skaters. We also have a bunch of fan-made um, acrylic stands that feature some of their most iconic um, scenes together, including one that isn't like that. It's not canon, but it, you know, it's the hope the hope of the fans and the implied next step for these characters. I really, these are the Toy Works 1 8 scales. A lot of people don't like them um, just because they don't, when they were first announced and first released, a lot of people didn't find their quality in comparison to their cost was um, adequate. They, a lot of people dislike the sculpt and the painting. I honestly don't have an issue with them whatsoever. I really love how dynamic they are. I also really appreciate that they're both in skating costumes and when you display them together, their hands and body and legs make a heart. And that's just so lovely. I love it so much. I love these two so much. And I'm sure that most people, if not everyone who's ever seen Yuri and Ice, also love them a whole bunch. So really, really, really happy to have these particular figures. It took me a long time to get Yuri because Victor wasn't popular. And so he really went down in price a huge amount from, re from release. And so a lot of people, including myself, didn't... I, I bought Victor after the fact, so I got a really good price on him. Really liked it and wanted to get the Yuri to match but Yuri like completely sold out on release whether that's because he's a nicer figure or whether that's because they made a lot less of him compared to Victor I don't know but I was finally able to pick him up secondhand for retail price which was a lot cheaper than what he was going for at the time and now so Yes, so happy to finally have them together again. Next, we have the six, well, really five plus one main characters of Free um, and Free Iwatobi Swim Club. So we have Haruka, um, we have Rin, Makoto, Rei, Nagisa, and Sosuke. All of them are 1 8 scales done by Alter. All of them were um, really lovely and were kind of the first ones for this male line by Alter. Um, it took a long time to get Rei and Nagisa uh, comparatively to the first four and thus, well really the first three because Sosuke was the fourth and so you can kind of see that they're not quite in scale with each other but I, I mean, that's such a, it's a small nitpick in comparison to the enjoyment I get from them. Really, really happy that we did manage to get quite a few scales for the series, especially because, I, as I said, I'm a big fangirl. And so I was definitely going to buy them and they look really nice when displayed together as per is my, <laughs> is how I tend to display these types of figures. Next we have scale figures from Yu Hakusho made by Mega House. Uh, I think, or no, these are Kotobukiya releases actually. So we have Yusuke Yurameshi, we have um, Hiei, we have Kuwabara, and we have Kurama as well as Yoko Kurama or Demon Kurama. Um, yeah, they're, these are actually my sister's figures. They're really lovely. She owned um, Kurama and Hiei and Yoko Kurama for a long time. Um, she was able to get 
Yusuke in Japan when we were there. She found a, a him in a kind of beat up box, so he was cheaper than she would have been able to find like second hand um, elsewhere online. And then Kuwabara she had to get during the second print run of him because she kind of, she wasn't really actively well she's still not actively collecting figures but she wanted to complete this set it is a really lovely set and obviously it's really nice having all of the characters because Yu Yu Hakusho is definitely like a team a team so you can't have one without the other finally we have some more scale figures all of these are one eighth scales we have uh, Utena from Revolutionary Girl. Utena, I really love this figure in particular. Um, definitely her most dynamic. I know some people at the time didn't like her very much due to like certain sculpt things, but I, I love her. She's gorgeous. We also have Maka from Soul Leader in a very dynamic pose. Um, I don't think this particular figure um, studio actually exists anymore, which is a shame because this, at least with this figure, I think they captured the character really, really well. And then we also have one of the Tolkien Rambu sword boys. I do not know his name. I do know, not know anything about him because I know nothing about Tolkien Rambu. But again, similarly like with my Vocaloid um, figure of Stardust, I he just... Oh, I like him. He appeals to me. His design appeals to me. And so I bought him. And he's really lovely. And so he's down here with these two. Next shelf at the very top we have my Nyanko Sensei plush. He's very lovely. My best friend gave him to me. He's from the series Not So Nice Book of Friends, which is one of my absolute favorite series of all time. And yeah, he's got a little snow bunny on his head, which is a reference to a particular uh, chapter slash episode. And I love him. He's so wonderful and really soft and fluffy and cuddly. So yeah. Next we have some more CDs. Some of these are complete bests. Some of them are soundtracks. We have Skate Dance Complete Best as well as Durara and Kurushitsuji or Black Butler um, and Higurashi. There's a Evangelion Disc um, Shirakuma Cafe Complete Best. Um, the opening or theme song to the Anohana movie and then the soundtrack to Your Lion April. Um, the soundtrack and the intro songs from You're Nice, and then uh, the first two, no, three, three, the, the first two seasons and the film soundtracks for free, um, you know, and Eternal Summer and Starting Days, etc. Next is the other half of my Ghibli collection. Um, so again from oldest to more recent with my neighbors the Yamadas, Spirited Away, The Cat Returns, Howl's Moon Castle, Tales from Earth Sea, Ponyo, Arietti from Up on Poppy Hill, The Wind Rises, The Princess Kaguya, and When Marnie Was There. I So that's all, that's every Ghibli film that has been released as of now and yeah so I have my completed Ghibli collection. Next is another display box with the first limited Blu-ray box of Hyoka. This came with disc one of the Japanese release. And again, a series that I really, really love at the time wasn't licensed. Um, and I was in Japan. It was for sale very cheap in a book off in Japan when I was there. So I picked it up because I wanted it for display purposes and or for to use for the English release if it ever got one. But thankfully I didn't ha actually have to use this box because I got a lovely release that you will see later for this particular show. Next more Haikyuu Nendoroids with Oikawa and Iwazumi who are from Alva Josai or the Blue Castle um, school. Sort of the most or the at least the first proper um, team that the the characters have to go against the first proper rivals of the series and also kind of the last proper rivals of the series for those who are finished with the manga like myself. Uh, yeah, really like these characters as well so had to get them. Haikyuu just is full of characters that I really like and thus I bought their androids. 
Next, we have some um, single volume books or, um, yeah, generally single volume books with a Love Song, which is a collection of Keiko Nishi short stories, Four Shoujo Stories, which is a anthology of a couple different mangaka, also not technically a legal release. Um, they only ever had one very small print run of this and Japan wasn't happy about it and thus this book is really hard to find but um, if you are a fan of especially Moto Hagia, this has her her manga They Were Eleven um, which is a sci-fi classic and definitely worth <laughs> worth hunting down but this particular book is pretty pretty hard to find especially for a reasonable price next to that is aa prime another moto Hagio piece next is the first volume of little miss p then rokure nashiko what is obscenity seven little sons of the dragon the wise wise beasts of the wizarding wisdoms maiden railways an imitation from a crab and then dolis um so again all sorts of different publishers there um, some very, very old releases, um, some flipped releases included, and yeah, a pretty interesting mix for anyone who has read these titles. Next we have another sword boy, again, I don't know anything about him, I don't know his name, I just really like his design, and thus I bought him, and he stands here, and he looks good. Um, so yeah, nothing really much to say about him, aside from he's a good smile, one eighth scale, and very lovely. Next we have some limited edition film releases, Lou Over the Wall, A Silent Voice, Docu Say, Classmates, In This Corner of the World, Melody of the Heart, and Promare, all really good films. <laughs> um, most of them are UK releases, there's one US release with Docu Say and a Japanese release with Melody of the Heart. More free prize figures, this time with Rin and Sosuke, again just the childhood versions of these two. Next is the third limited tin of the original Full Metal Alchemist singles releases. Um, this I purely bought again for display purposes. Uh, the original Full Metal Alchemist was released in singles that would be held in tins like this. Um, there's three altogether. This is the third and final one. And it's super cheap to get online because there's a whole bunch of uh, volume 10s of the original Full Malchemist that um, are un haven't been sold. So yeah, it's a nice little weird little thing to have. So finally we have some more soundtracks and CDs and stuff. Um, Hunter x Hunter soundtracks, a Mushishi soundtrack, soundtrack, a computer disc for free which has like computer little mascots and then a notebook which looks like the gate of truth from full metal alchemist on the top of the next shelf we have the art book for nabari no o as well as a one minute scale of kino from kino's journey this is an older scale we also have one to nine of the full metal alchemist full metal editions which are hardcover manga releases as well as the gate of truth um, which was released with Anime Limited, a UK re publisher's release of the original Full Malchemist, and some prize figures of the main characters, Edward and, Elric, Edward and Alphonse Elric, and then Roy Mustang and Teresa Hawkeye. Yep, I love Full Malchemist. Oh, there's also the Four Coma collection of, from the manga up there as well. So yeah, that's kind of where my Full Metal Alchemist display is currently. I'm really happy that we're getting the hardcovers for the series as well. Next shelf we have DVD releases for anime. There's the Nabari no O box that I made, Kino's Journey, the original series, um, and then Hunter x Hunter, the complete 1999 series, as well as just a, um, again, display. This is for the Conqueror of Shambhala TV, or well, movie, DVD that's a Japanese release. Um, it does have English subtitles so interestingly enough. Um, and then next to that are all of my standard DVD stuff, so House of Five Leaves, um, Welcome to Erebus Office, Holic, and then the Holic film and Tsubasa film, uh, Air, Quasi in a Foreign Labyrinth, Fantastic Children, the complete series, Ghost Hunt, the, 
Ghost Stories, the complete series, Hakaba Kitaro, Canon, Lovely Complex, Nana, Night Raid 1931, Norame, Canterville, um, Paradise Kiss, Planetas, Ristorante Paradiso, Toward the Terror, and then X. I haven't watched X or Nana, Nana yet, which are kind of the last things in my collection that I still need to watch. Um, and I'm hoping to upgrade my Planetas set to the UK Blu-ray when that comes out in the next year or so. So yeah. On the next shelf is more Blu-ray size limited edition box sets. Again, some that I make a lot that are UK or US releases. So first we have Hyoka, which is a UK release. And then Death Note, US release. A box that I made for you, Haka Show, which has the four singles set anime classic release Blu-rays. Then one of the newer releases of Full Alchemist, the original series from the UK and then the Conqueror of Shambhala film in a box that I made. Next to that is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, the Ashine release, both seasons of Silver Spoon, the first season of Mob Psycho 100, the box set of the two seasons of Snow White with the Red Hair, Samurai Flamenco, 91 Days, Bakano, which is another UK release, 12 Kingdoms, which is another release that I made, as well as Space Brothers, which is another release that I made. Space Dandy, which has both seasons in there, Star Driver, another one that I made, and then the complete collection of Pat Labor. Next is Garden of Sinners, the first eight films in, or the seven films in epilogue film from Japan. This also had a general release in the US. Um, the Anaplex of America release of The Garden of Sinners. Then we have Ghost in the Shell, uh, Standalone Complex, and OVAs. Tamako Market, which is another box that I made, which has the show and the film. Gunketsuo, uh, Gun which is the Count of Monte Cristo, phenomenal series in the UK, Steelbook, um, Clanad, both seasons in there that, again, that I made. Erica 7, and then the sequel, Erica 7 Ao or Ao. Um, Sailor Moon Crystal, the first three seasons of that. Robotics Notes. And then some of these at the end are box sets that I'm currently in the process of making. So we have Tiger and Bunny, um, which is a box set that I'm going to be making uh, next to the UK releases of the films, The Beginning and The Rising. Then we have um, three boxes that I'm currently making as well, which is for Hozuki's Cool Headedness, season one and two, Haruhi Suzumiya, um, the show two seasons and the film, and then for the ultimate edition of When They Cry, Higurashi. At the end of this one we have um, a photograph of that I took myself when I was in Japan, of myself and my sister as well, um, and then also an acrylic stand from Yuri and Ice. So that's, that's almost the end of the anime. <laughs> We're almost through to the end. Next is a display shelf. We have my 1 8 scale of Natsume Takashi from Natsume's Book of Friends, as well as one of my beat up copies of this NIS America release, um, just in background for display. We also have Hozuki from Hozuki's Cool Headedness and the Medicine Seller from Mononoke, as well as my 10 volumes of the Japanese release of Mushishi, which again I bought in Japan when I was there and before I owned the series on um, in the manga form. Next we have uh, the rest of my Blu-ray movies. So the one side is all of Mamoru Hosoda, Satoshi Kon and um, Makoto Shinkai films with um, The Girl Who Let Through Time, Summer Wars, Wolf Children, The Boy and the Beast and Mirai, Five Centimeters for Second slash uh, Voices of a Distant Star, The Place Promised in Our Early Days, Children Who Chase Lost Voices, The Garden of Words, uh, Your Name, and then the Japanese release of Your Name. Um, then Perfect Blue, Millennium Actress, and Paprika. I'm still needing to get Tokyo Godfathers. Um, but yeah, so that's all of their filmography so far. Um, and I still need to get Weathering With You, which hasn't actually been released anywhere yet. So. That's also on my to get list. Next is a one of the limited edition releases of a Chihai Furu volume in Japanese. So again, just a bit of display there. 
And then the rest of my Blu-ray film releases with Akira, Barefoot Gen, uh, the two films, The Empire of Corpses, Evangelion 1.11 to 1.0 or 3.33, so all of the reboot films, Lupin the Third, Jigen's Gravestone, and Goemon's Blood Spray, Mary and the Witch's Flower, Night on the Galactic Railroad, Time of Eve, the OVA and film, the second Orosei Yatsura film, Beautiful Dreamer, the Blue Exorcist movie, Colorful, the um, Erica Seven film, Ghost in the Shell and Innocence, Giovanni's Island, Maquia, um, Metropolis, Origin, Spirits of the Past, Penguin Highway, Psychic School Wars, the three Sailor Moon films, and Tech on Kincrete. Next we have some more completed manga series with 1 to 14 of Nabara no O by Yuki Kamatani. I adore the series, really love it, very underrated. Next to that is the 10 volumes of Mushishi, um, including the 3-in-1 omnibus of the last three volumes, and then Banana Fish volumes 1 to 19, which of course were just recently reprinted thanks to the new anime adaptation. So really nice to have the entirety of that series in my collection too. Next we have the series A Bride Story by Karu Mori. This is 1 to 11 up to date in English. We also have a bunch of art books um, including uh, Moto Hagio, the art book for Given, the art book for Toilet Bound Hanukokun, um, there's a Yona book in there, Kimi Toroke, Time of Eve, Natsume Ono, um, Ko Yonada, and Haruko Kumota, um, as well as Takuko Shimura and um, oh, uh, Sakurai, what, whatever her name is, the, the 10 count woman. Um, but yeah, lovely, lovely art books there and all different sorts of titles included. Next to that are the first two uh, volumes or of the re-release of The Drifting Classroom by Kazuo Umez and then the entirety of Sunny by Tayo Matsumoto. On the bottom shelf we have the Pandora Hearts box set, um, the complete series in omnibus format from Yen Press, really lovely. Next to that is the manga um, book put out by the British Museum from their manga exhibit uh, for a couple years ago. Then we have the first volume of Neo Japanism's print release um, focused on the Showa period. Next to that is another manga sort of related to the British Museum. This is Professor Munakata's British Museum Adventures which actually takes place in the British Museum and was written for sale at the British Museum. And then we have volumes 1 to 8 of Wandering Sun, the entirety of the series that was published into English unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so that's that's this one. Next we have um, the two box set release of Sailor Moon. This is the 12 volumes just collected in two box sets. Really lovely artwork. This is again um, actually my sister's and just sits here because it's pretty and we both read it and so yeah I mean not much more to say than that. It is quite hard to find these box sets nowadays and there are the um, Eternal editions of Sailor Moon coming out nowadays as well so not necessary to get this but the singles are also readily available nowadays too. Next is the Japanese Blu-ray box of Wandering Sun. This contains all six of the Blu-ray volumes. Um, this series is never released in English on disc. It is available on Crunchyroll to stream but I really like this series. It was actually my introduction to Wandering Sun and it's never been licensed so I wanted to own it in some shape um, because I don't know whether or not it would ever get a legal release on disc in English at any point. So yeah, plus it works as a little bit of display. On this shelf we have some more like one shots and female focused in particular uh, books with All My Darling Daughter and Not Love But Delicious Food Makes Me So Happy both by Fumi Yoshinaga, My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness and My Solo Exchange Diary 1 and 2, Claudine, The Bride Was a Boy, um, The Country of Cherry Blossoms or Town of Cherry Blossoms, Pink, Helter Skelter and In Clothes Called Fat. Many of these are Jose series and are from 
uh, particular creators that I really enjoy. Um, and yeah, definitely check them out if that sounds like your thing. More Nendroids this time, Akashi and Bokuto from Haikyuu. Again, characters I enjoy, characters I like, and characters that got Nendroids, so I, I decided to get them. Um, yeah, and they, they look good here together, they're on the same team, and uh, yeah, they're fun, cute. Next we have the complete four volumes of Skullface bookseller Honda-san, really fun little retail comedy. Then we have uh, Ran, Ran and the Grey World, which is one to four of the seven volume series. Ran is kind of not exactly high on my priority, but now that it is, it is complete, I am hoping to finish it up sooner rather than later. Next is some more display, this time with Free. The box is the character singles for the original series, so Rin, Makoto, Haru, Nagisa, and Rei. Um, you know, just character songs sung by the voice actors. And then we also have two rubber straps that were actually retailer exclusives um, of Haru and Makoto, which are art or designed from a very particular end card from the series that I, I liked a lot and so I had to I had to get these so yeah and I mean again shameless free fangirl and not gonna apologize for it. Next we have volumes one to three of Paradise Kiss this is the vertical release and the entirety of the series then we also have volume one of Complex Age which is a completed series in six volumes I'm hoping to get the rest I just again haven't gotten around to it but I know how much space the books will take up, so that's why it's in this little section here. So I can just put the books there as I get them. Another Haikyuu Nendo here. Um, this is Ushiwaka, um, Ushiwara Wakijo, I believe is his name. Um, yeah, re a kind of prevalent character in the third season of the show. Um, pop popular and important character throughout the series. Um, yeah, but again, he's he's actually the only one from his team that has gotten a Nendo, which kind of makes me sad because I would I buy a Tendo Nendo, um, and I it, like even if it didn't rhyme. Uh, but yeah, he's he's great. He's cute, um, despite being so stern faced. And yeah. Next is the entirety of Ranma One Half, uh, sets one to eight. Um, set five and set eight are flipped over with the cases out because I haven't watched those and that's currently where I'm watching right now. And volume six and seven are similarly flipped over just because I haven't watched them yet. So when I have watched it, I just, I, I switch it. So the spine is showing. Uh, but yeah, Ranma One Half, pretty fun older series at this point, Rumiko Takahashi, uh, classic, classic, um, not, not a perfect series, hasn't aged well in a lot of respects, but it's a good time, it's great, um, you know, just, just to not have to engage your brain, it's just fun, wacky hijinks. A little bit of display here, and another Nendo for level E, this is actually my sister's box set, of the Blu-rays, but, and also Hernando of Prince Baca, who is the main character of Levely. Um, this is a fun series, and it's one of um, Togashi's lesser known series compared to Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter, so check it out, it's pretty fun. Finally for this shelf we have the entirety of Erika Sakurazawa's works that we got in English from Tokyo Pop. We also have Sweat and Honey, which was another Tokyo Pop release um, Mari ok Okazaki's stuff, and then we have volumes one and two of From Eroica with Love. Um, they did release 15 volumes of this, but it is super out of print, really hard to find, and uh, has been out of print for years. And will I so I will never get any more of this probably unless I find it really cheap, second hand, at like a library sale, like I did with these two volumes. So, yeah, some little odds and ends there, uh, specifically classic shoujo and jose works. On the top of the next shelf we have the Hikaru no Go art book by Takashi Obata. We have another Snow Bunny plush. We have the box set for Oran High School Host Club 
and you can see sort of peeking over is the Wolf Throne Ultimate Edition box set that came with the UK Blu-ray. Starting on this shelf we have completed manga series with one to seven of Kitaro. These are the drawn and quarterly um, collections. Then we have one to 13 of Moonchild, one to 10 of Honey and Clover, one to 14 of Kiss Him Not Me, and one to three of That Blue Sky Feeling. Next, um, the completed series one to 13 of Dawn of the Arcana, completed uh, number six of one to nine, My Boy, which is ongoing, um, one to five, the first volume of The Golden Sheep, which is completed in three volumes, volumes one to three of Go With the Clouds North by Northwest, and then finally the completed Twin Speaker with one to 12 of the complete series. Next is the entirety of Natsume's Book of Friends on, up to date with 1 to 24. We also have a Nyanko Sensei artwork and a 1 7th scale of the little fox um, from that series. And then also next to that is 1 to 7 of The Girl from the Other Side. That is an ongoing series. Next shelf is a bunch of one shots. Uh, we have some artwork, commissioned artwork of my sister and myself, as well as the pair figure for Banana Fish with Ash and Eiji, um, a plant, obviously. Um, then there's Sakuran, um, Sarazan Mai Reo and Mabu, which is a spin off single volume, um, uh, Hiroaki Samura's Emerald and Other Stories, Laughter at the World's End, uh, The Voices of a Distant Star, Blue Spring, The Sailor Moon. Um, short story collections, The God's Lie, Dream Fossil, Not Simple, Neo Parasite M and F, Solonin and the Epilogue, In This Corner of the World, Japan, Korea, and Volume 1 of Gleola, um, which is a really interesting alternative indie uh, anthology. Next we have uh, Volumes 1 to 11 of the Vinland Saga um, Omnibuses, then we have volumes 1 to 5 of Witch Hat Atelier and volumes 1 to 8 of Delicious and Dungeon. All of these are ongoing but up to date, which is great because I'm looking forward to the next volumes. This shelf we have 1 to 10 of Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, um, a scale figure of Yato from Noragami Stray God, as well as the Loot Crate exclusive volume 1 um, just as display. And then volumes 1 to 21 of the manga and volume 1 of the stray story side stories manga. Next we have volumes 1 to 28 of Black Butler, volumes 1 to 6 of the case study of Vanitas, uh, volumes 1 and 2 of Yuri Bearstorm. I do have volume 3 but it's actually on, I'm le I've lent it out to someone currently. So that's a completed series. And then Bloom Into You, volumes 1 to 6, there are 8 in total, although the 8th volume has not yet been released. Next, and finally for this bookcase, we have 1 to 10 of The Blade of the Immortal Omnibuses, or Omnibuy. Then we have 1 to 9, the complete series of Tokyo Tarareba Girls. Then 1 to 6 of Kasei-san and an ongoing Yuri series. And then volumes 1 to 3 of Blank Kane blank canvas my so-called artist's journey um, which is a completed series in five volumes um, and i haven't quite caught up with it yet next we have the box set for revolutionary girl utana which includes adolescence of utana um, beautiful box set for a lovely manga and then uh the first we actually have the first 10 volumes of umaneko um the third volume as per usual in these uh, pick up videos is not there because my sister has supposedly been reading it for the last year and a half which means she hasn't been reading it she just hasn't put it back um this this series has a couple volumes currently out of print um so i'm trying to aim to finish it sooner rather than later but it's also um i think part of the reason volumes are hard to find is because the pandemic has meant that reprints are not a high priority for a lot of these titles and getting them back in stock for retailers so who knows if i'll be able to find copies for all the books that i need 
Next we have a completed series with Doro Hedoro 1 to 23, um, an almost completed series with Silver Spoon 1 to 14, that's completed in 15 volumes, and then 1 to 6 of Aka 13, which is again a completed series, although there is a spin-off slash sequel um, that has been licensed and we will be getting very soon, which I look forward to because I really like the series. Next is my Hunter Hunter shelf. It has volumes 1 to 20 or 1 to 36, sorry, and then volume 0, which was a film exclusive, event exclusive prequel um, in Japanese. And then also I have my 1 8 scales of Gone and Killua, main characters of the series. Um, so yeah, love Hunter Hunter, my favorite of Togashi's works. Um, yeah, it's it's lovely. It's always on hiatus. But I can deal with that, and I can't wait for whenever he comes back and we get volume 37 at some point. <laughs> Apologies for glare on the shelf, but we have one to three of Andromeda stories and two Terra, both by Keiko um, Takamiya. Then we have um, Goodbye Geist, which is a single volume uh, done by Ryo Hanada, who also did the series that is, follows that. And you can't really see because of the glare, but that's Devil's Line, 1 to 14. And then finally, for this section, we have Our Dreams at Dusk, 1 to 4, by um, Yuki Kamatani, which is wonderful, complete in those four volumes as well. Then we have another Nendoroid for, of uh, Toko from Book Girl, light novel series. Really, really love that particular series, so I decided to get her. And then finally, for the shelf, we have... Ro uh, Versailles of the Dead, Volumes 1 and 2, Satoko and Nada, Volumes 1 and 2, A Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow, Volumes 1 and 2, and then Toilet Bound, Hamakakun, 1 and 2. All ongoing series, and yeah, so I need to get more of them before I move them elsewhere. On the next shelf, we have all of my Volume 1s for newly debuted, ongoing, starting, started series, so Cocoon Entwined, Heavily Delusion, my androgynous boyfriend, a man and his cat, BL Metamorphosis, Perfect World, Prince Freya, Spy Family, Penguin Drum, Become You, Nicola, and or traveling around the demon world, and Love Me for Who I Am, all of which I really enjoy and hope to get more of, but there's only one volume so far, so they just sit here. And then a Chai Fu postcard it framed, and next to that are some of my ongoing um, large trim books, um, so Drifting Dragons 1 to 3, Phantom Tales of the Night 1 to 4, Margus of the Library 1 to 3, Blue Flag 1 and 2, and then Hell's Paradise 1 and 2, as well as more prize figures from Free with Rin, Haru, and Makoto um, in sailor suits that I think are really cute. So again, just I have them there and they're they're very adorable. Next is 1 to 9 of To Your Eternity, a couple volumes behind on that one but really, really good. Same creator as A Silent Voice. Next to that is the Japanese limited edition of um, Recalled Out Summer, the OVA for Garden of Sinners. Again, just display. Um, next to that is Horomiya 1 to 12, a, a volume or so behind again on this one, but really love this series. Mob Psycho 100, uh, volumes 1 to 4, and then the entirety of what we got in English of Bride of Deimos, which is a horror shoujo series and uh, really nice, but uncompleted, unfortunately. Next are some ongoing shoujo manga with Snow White with the red hair, 1 to 7, Requiem of the Rose King, 1 to 11. I'm still behind, I need to pick up 12 because I, I, I love the series and I just fell behind on it. And then Yona of the Dawn, volumes 1 to 24, which is the most recent in English. On the next shelf is some ongoing large trim manga that I have. So 1 to 14 of What Did You Eat Yesterday? That's up to date. Love the series. Again, Fumi Yoshinaga, adore her work. Then is Hakume and Mikochi, um, which has eight volumes out in English. I only have 1 to 6, so I need to catch up on that. Land of the Lustrous, uh, volumes 1 to 10, which is phenomenal and everyone should be reading. Dead, Dead Demons, Dead 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 Destruction by Inio Asano, volumes 1 to 7. Watakoi, um, Love is Hard for Otaku, Omnibus 1 and to 3, and then O oh Maidens in Your Savage Season, Volumes 1 to 6. Again, a little bit behind on that one, um, but hope to get more. And finally, for this, this bookcase, um, and for the main 
uh, collection bookcases is Haikyuu Volumes 1 to 38. Um, this series recently ended um, in Japan. It'll be 45 volumes in all. And so I'm actually waiting until the 45th volume comes out in English. And then I'm going to buy all of the last seven volumes all at once. Just because um, I, I've read it and I am excited and I love it. But I, it's not... Like Shonen Jump stuff doesn't tend to be the highest priority for me for buying. Just because I have read it and can read it on Shonen Jump app. So yeah. It's wonderful though. Love it, love it, love it. Um, these shelves are inside a wardrobe, so apologies if the lighting's not brilliant. Um, but these are all completed, um, or mostly completed titles. Um, and yeah, so they live in the cupboard closet. Um, and I love them all, but you know, they're, I have so many books, I need to find somewhere to put them all. So we have Hikaru no Go 1 to 23 completed. Kaishi 1 to 35 completed and then After School Nightmare 1 to 10 completed. Next is Omnibus 1 and 4 of Kurosagi Corpse Delivery Service as well as like a Jojo little portrait thing there. Monster 1 to 9 of the Omnibus so the complete series. 1 to 9 of Welcome to the Ballroom um, illustrated portrait and then 1 to 8 of with the light raising an autistic child which is the entire 17 volumes in a omnibus format then we have frau and akiko from robotics notes these are prize figures um people who've watched my videos before they they've been here since the very very beginning um and then we have skip beat 1 to 43 um this is an ongoing shoujo series longest series in my collection currently as well and with no real sign of stopping. And then we have a whole bunch of like odd little fan books and stuff, art books in Japanese there. So yeah, that's this shelf, basically just skip beat. <laughs> Next we have the complete series of again, one to 12, more illustrated portraits and some duplicates from the free um, trading figures with Rin and Makoto. Uh, 1 to 13 of Yotsuba, that's, there's 14 volumes out currently, I just haven't gotten the most recent volume. Um, 1 to 6 of Mysterious Girlfriend X, which is the complete series. Uh, 1 to 8 of Gangsta, which is where it has been currently for a long time. It is now off hiatus, but um, you know, it took a while for it to get off of hiatus. And then 1 to 5 of Gangsta Cursed, which is the entirety of the series complete. Another illustrated portrait and some Full Metal Alchemist prize figures. High School Debut 1 to 13, which is the original complete series. There is actually a two volume sequel, which is only available in the 3 1 omnibuses. So I'm still needing to get the last omnibus to get the full story. But um, this is done by the same creator as My Love Story, which, if you enjoyed, I would highly recommend High School Debut. Uh, next to that is Lovely Complex or Lovecom 1 to 17 and then Wandering Sun 1 to 15 in its entirety in Japanese. Finally for this bookcase shelves and again apologies for low quality just it's it's so dark and I have to film from kind of far away um, but we have 1 to 27 of Kaze Hikaru a completed in Japanese ongoing in English Jose series it will be completed in 44 volumes. Um, whenever that happens because these volumes come come out very very slowly um, we also have another photograph and illustrated portrait um, some nandroid patis from Kwasi in a for foreign labyrinth and then Ottoman volume 1 to 18 the complete series down the bottom is just like a bunch of fan books and nendo pieces and things like that it's a bit of a mess you don't really want to see any of that but yeah so that's the entirety of this inner bookcase thing. For the last bookcase in the main collection room we have 1 to 12 of Vagabond in the Visbig collections. Um, I still need to get volume 37 which is the only non-volume that hasn't been collected in these Visbigs because this series has been on hiatus forever but I really like these particular books and I don't have an issue with them reading them um, with like 
broken spines or losing pages or anything. So yeah, really lovely. And I love the spines, the spine art. It's so nice. Next we have 1 to 12 of Fruits Basket, the collector's edition, which is the entirety of the 23 single volumes. Then also volumes 1 to 5, the entire series of Children of the Sea. Both really, really good. Both really, really different. And this kind of shelf is sort of all of my favorite stuff. In saying that, like everything is my favorite stuff in my collection, but these are tend to be completed series or really the best of the best um, in my collection. So yeah. Next is the single volume Kaurumori Anything and Something, a bunch of Kaurumori's short story collection. Um, and then we have Emma, volumes one to five, the 10 volume release put in hardback two and ones. Then we have Go Go Monster by Tayo Matsumoto, another hardcover release. Utsubora, the story of a novelist. My Brother's Husband, volume one and two. The two bilingual editions of Chihaya Furu, which are Japanese releases with English in them. And then Shirley, which is the single volume CMX release, the only version of this book that we ever got. But I am hoping that one day Yen Press will relicense Shirley. And then also we have the titular Emma in a 1 8 scale, and she's beautiful. I love her. So yeah. Next we have the complete series of Princess Jellyfish. This is the box set. I did actually like buy this as it came out and then when they announced the box set I gave the books that I already had to my sister and rebought the whole series in the box set. Why? Because I wanted the pretty box but also I wanted to give the series my money because I adore Princess Jellyfish. Definitely one to check out if you haven't. It's very fun, it's very funny, just all around wonderful. Next to that is the entirety of House of Five Leaves, a seinen series by Natsuma, Natsume Ono. Highly recommend this one as well, of course. Everything on, on the shelf or in this bookcase I highly recommend. And then next to that is the complete series 1 to 10 of Descending Stories. Uh, one of my all-time favorites and the anime is phenomenal. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. It's Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju. And then we also have a acrylic stand of the main character um, in his like young version, um, Kiku version, before he becomes Yakumo. Um, yeah, you know, wonderful, wonderful series. Be sure to, to buy it. It's really, really good. Next is volume one of Ping Pong by Tayo Matsumoto. This is the first half of the series, uh, another series I just absolutely adore. Cannot wait for part two. And then Cats of the Louvre, another Matsumoto piece. This is an all-in-one edition. And similarly to um, the Araki um, Rohan of the Louvre, it was written for the gallery. Next to that is the first volume of Udon's Rose of Versailles release. Oh, long time coming, but totally worth it. Really looking forward to volume two and three whenever it decides to actually be released thanks to the pandemic. Then we have volumes one to three of Fruits Basket, another, an unnecessary sequel to the original Fruits Basket, but I don't actually hate it at all. Um, I think it's well intentioned. It's very fan servicey, but I don't think it's, I think it's good at what it's trying to be. Um, and this is basically in here just because I needed something for the space. Uh, and then we have Pluto, volumes one to eight completed, my favorite of um, Urasawa's works personally. And then we have Planetas 1 and 2 and Sweet Blue Flowers 1 to 4. Lastly, for the general manga, um, we have Tech on King Crete, um, we have Drunken Dreams and other stories, we have volume 1 of The Poe Clan, the complete two volumes of Otherworld Barbara, and the one volume release of The Heart of Thomas. All of those, aside from Tech on King Crete, are done by Moto Hagio. Then we have um, Nijigahara Holograph, which is an Inyo Asano work, A Distant Neighborhood, and The Walking Man, both done by Jiro Tanaguchi. All of these are larger hardcover releases, aside from Tekken King Creek, yet again. Um, some really phenomenal mangaka here. Um, and yeah, just really beautiful books, mostly from Fantagraphics books, which are pricey, but definitely worth the money. Then we also have a 
at framed notebook, um, which includes art from Not Submit's Book of Friends, and then also a plush version of Xiaomi from Full Metal Alchemist. Finally, we have a majority of my art book collection here. These are all a four releases. Um, these are from various manga, various anime, um, and include stuff from like the Twelve Kingdoms, Free, Jiro Noguchi's works, um, Tagami Bachi, Full Metal Alchemist, Soul Eater, My Little Monster, Nabari no O oh, yet again, Pandora Hearts, Mushishi, um, Descending Stories, Requiem of the Rose King, um, Spice and Wolf, D. Grey Man, and uh, Land of the Lustrous, there, and Kino Strange. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. And Yu Yu shows in here as well. Um, yeah, I, I really like art books. I'm a particular fan and I too try to buy as many as I can. Um, it's sort of been a slower process for me recently, but I, I have plenty. <laughs> I'm certainly not hurting for art books. Here is a little table, actually the top of where I actually film a lot of my videos and my hauls. Um, but here we have the rest of my art books, or the majority of the rest of my art books, including um, from Taya Matsumoto. There's uh, the Jiro Tanaguchi Louvre manga here, Garden of the Louvre. Um, there, this is the Dora Hedora art book. This is the book that came with the ultimate edition of the original Full Metal Alchemist. There's the Banana Fish art book in there. There's a Tech on King Creep book in there. These two are Black Butler books. Um, there's also Asumiku Nakamura uh, art books in here, a Honey and Clover um, number six as well. Um, just a real mix of things, some promotional booklets from movies and stuff as well. And in the corner here, you can't really see, um, but there's the Death Note art book in there as well. And I also have a file um, for all of my various clear files. Um, which is another thing that I tend to collect uh, merchandise wise. Um, also Daisuke Igarashi art books there too. So yeah, again, more art books, definitely um, one of my more favorite things to buy that's outside of more typical like manga and, and light novel and anime release. So yeah, really happy, really happy to have all of these and I do look through them quite a bit. Um, you know, they, they're well loved in this household. Lastly for this collection video is all of the stuff that's like outside of the collection room. There's still like figures and things. So we have um, prize figures of Hinata and Kageyama from Haikyuu. And actually next to that we have Holo from Spice and Wolf, including the 17 in 1 collector's edition 10th anniversary uh, re-release of the novels in one big book. I already own all the novels so that's just that's a, just a little bit of display there. Next are Yachi and Kyoko who are the managers for Karasuno in Haiki. Uh, these are different style of prize figure and this is the only prize figure line that has has these two which is sad because I love the girls and they deserve more love um, so I wanted to get them to yet again, you know, display because I, I love all the Haiki characters. There's no, I don't know how else I can reiterate it. <laughs> Next is another Natsume Takashi figure. This is the 1 8th scale by Alter. Beautiful, love him. He's gorgeous. And just below, we have um, the entirety of the Book Girl light novels, volumes 1 to 8. One of the earliest light novels put out by Yen Press, and personally one of my favorite series of light novels. Next we have a whole mix of light novels. This is Record of Loros War, which is arguably um, the first light novel ever, um, The Grey Witch in specific. Then we have the two novels of Perfect Blue, Awaken from a Dream and Complete Metamorphosis, the Your, Your Name light novel and the kind of companion light novel your name, an Another Side Earthbound. We have the three Pandora Hearts light novels, which is obviously based off of the manga of the same name. And then Time of Eve, Another Act, which is yet again based in the anime universe of the same name. 
up we have a couple more odds and ends with light novels. We have the five Full Metal Alchemist light novels that were released by Viz back in the day. And then the single Kino's Journey or Kino no Tabi uh, light novel, um, The Beautiful World, which again, I have mentioned before, I love Kino's Journey and I kind of had to had to buy this one because I it's very hard to find though and out of print. So next we have volumes 1 to 21 of Spice and Wolf. Volume 17 was the original conclusion to the series and then 18 to 21 has been a follow-up um, since uh, for the 10th anniversary of the original series and then we also have the sequel series Wolf and Parchment volumes 1 to 4 which is a spin-off um, also titled New Theory Spice and Wolf which is about the next generation of these characters and it's pretty good pretty solidly decent if you already enjoy this Spice and Wolf universe Next we have the entirety of Kieli. Um, this is volumes 1 to 9, another one of Yen Press's early titles and also one that's quite out of print and hard to find. I do recommend it though, there is a digital release so if you're wanting to read it you still can. There's also the 10 volumes of the Haruhi Suzumiya light novels that were released in English and is pretty much the entirety of the series, um, especially since it's been on hiatus forever. Um, then we have a bunch of, I guess, um, movies. There's two movie fill like tie-in light novels and there's two like no or novels, novels, novels that have had film adaptations. So we have Penguin, Hi Penguin Highway and Sonida's short Walk On Girl, both which have films that I own. And then Wolf Children, Ami and Yuki, and Mirai, which are the light novel versions of Mamoru Hosoda's films with the same name, which again I own. Next to that is the print edition of Ascendance of a Bookworm, um, the three volumes of Part 1, Daughter of a Soldier, and then also the first two volumes of Part 2, which is Apprentice Shrine Maiden. Um, that's the most current... Um, in print that we have, um, but there will be four parts to part two um, when it finishes. And the translations um, on J Novel's subscription service is already up to part three, volume one. We also have J.K. Haru is a sex worker in another world, which is wonderful. Do not be put off by the name, especially if you're wanting a, if you're sick of isekai stories and you're wanting a feminist take on one. It's really, really good, and you're not put off by um, the description of sex. It's not even explicit, um, but it is really, really good. Definitely, definitely read it. Next are all of my Narita light novels with 1 to 9, and then 12 and 13 of Durara. I still need to get 10 and 11. I just picked up 12 and 13 because they were cheap from where I bought them. And then Bakuno, which is my personal favorite of the two, with volumes 1 to 13 of the series, which is currently ongoing um, and at 20-something volumes. Durara is actually complete at 13 volumes, so once I get the last two that I need, it will be completed and I can finally finish it up. Um, but yeah, out of the two, Bakuno is personally my favorite and it does have the nicer release out of the two series as well. And finally, for my collection, is all of my BL manga, a um, bunch of Fumi Yoshinaga stuff with Ichigen Mei, the first class is Civil Law, Gerard and Jacques, um, Truly Kindly, and Lovers in the Night. Next to that is Koyonada stuff with Knights, or Knight S, um, Twittering Birds Never Fly, 1 to 3, No Touching at All, um, Even So I Will Love You Tenderly. Um, next to that is Seven Days, the original two volume release by June. And then the more recent re-release from Sublime, uh, which is the both the entire series and just one omnibus. Um, next to that is a bunch of Junko's titles, or a couple of Junko's titles with Miss Mr. Minimart and Return of the Prince. Then volumes one and two of Only Serious About You. The three volumes of Classmates by Asumiku Nakamura. Then we have I Hear the Sunspot, um, the original, then Theory of Happiness, and then Limit volumes one and two which is still ongoing, and I look forward to Volume 3 of Limit. Then we have SDEM stuff with Age Cold Blue and Tableau numero 20. 
um, Escape Journey Volumes 1 to 3 by um, Ogretsuko Tanaka, and then Scarlet Barrico's books Jackass and Fourth Generation Head Tatsuki Oyamato. Um, next to that are, are Siunde's books, Go for it Nakamura and Total Eclipse of the Eternal Heart. Very, very different books, uh, both really good, but I would not recommend one if you enjoy the other. They are complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Next to that are some books released by Kuma Publishing, which is Faku's LGBT queer explicit manga um, label. So we have Melting Lover by Bukuro Yamata, Yamada, which is actually not ex explicit at all. Um, it has, it, um, I think with the expectation that this is a Faku book, it really doesn't have like any uncensored pornography and really very little sex scenes in it whatsoever. It's an interesting anthology of sci-fi short stories. And next to that is Can an Otaku Like Me Really Be an Idol, which features cross-dressing. Um, and a very girly top um, to this relationship. This one is more explicit than, than Melting Lover and is uh, probably more in line with what people might expect from this sort of imprint. Next to that is our dining table, which is really, really sweet, really, really lovely and um, completely uh, easy to recommend. There's no explicitness whatsoever. And then next to that are the messy, drama-filled um, The Cornered Mouse Dreams of Cheese and The Carp on the Chopping Block Jumps Twice, both by Setona Mizushi, Mizushiro, um, who has done a bunch of other stuff, Black Rose Alice, and more specifically in my collection, After School Nightmare. Um, yeah, really happy to have those particular books finally licensed as well. Next are the complete four volumes of Intense by Kyung Ha Yi, which is a Korean release, another Kyung Ha re release, or Kyung Ha Yi release with Dreams of the Days, and then next to that is You and Me, etc., New Beginnings, which is done by um, Kutetsuko Yamamoto, who I really, really enjoy, and l thankfully, excitingly, we've gotten actually more of her stuff licensed recently for print, and I cannot wait to buy it. Um, and then we've got some more Fumi Yoshinaga stuff with The Moon and the Sandals, Don't Say Any More Darling, and Soul Fige, which means that I do actually own everything that has been released in English that Fumi Yoshinaga has ever put out. Um, Soul Fige is probably my least favorite because it features a student child or a child teacher student relationship. Oh my goodness. Um, but it's still very good considering that I'm not a fan of that trope whatsoever. Um, and then we have 10 Dance Volumes 1 to 5. Ongoing. Love it. Really, really good. Next to that is 1 and 2 of Monster and the Beast. Another really fun, interesting um, BL and quite well liked from everything I've heard of other people. I enjoy it a lot as well. There's three volumes currently in Japan. There's volume one of Cherry Magic, 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard, um, which was, oh, it's so adorable. It's so funny and cute and lovely. And I'm, again, really happy we've gotten that. Next to that is Star Collector, which is actually one of Tokyo Pops's um, original English language manga. Very good. Um, really, I honestly, if you weren't aware of it, you probably wouldn't even notice that it was an English language ma manga. Um, Next to that is Future Lovers, the complete series. Prince Bari 1 and 2, 3 and 4 have already been released and um, I missed it so I need to get on that and order them because I really enjoy that. That's another Korean um, BL. Then we have Apple and Honey and then Apple and Honey, um, His Rose Colored Life, which is the sequel. Um, Liquor and Cigarettes by Ranma Rosaria, which is very good as well. And then the entirety of Blue Morning 1 to 8, which is the only of Shoko Hiraka's series that, um, longer series at least, which has gotten a complete release in English, unfortunately. But it's really, really good and highly recommended if you like historical romance. Finally, for the manga, the BL manga, and the collection in general, <laughs> we have Given Volume 1 and 2, 
Um, this has really become a favorite of mine, and I think most people, it had a wonderful anime adaptation recently. Really excited for more of these books. Then we have One to Five of Border by Kazuma, Kazuma Koraka. I actually, I really like Koraka's works, and this is by far my favorite. Um, there's none of the more dodgy elements from her older stuff present, but unfortunately, like with every June release, it's not really reliable in that we'll get any more. This is technically an ongoing series. Volume 6 is out in Japan. And uh, I don't know if we'll ever see the end of it or uh, the continuation of it. Uh, which is so sad because I, I, I really like the series. Thankfully, I do think that most of it's still in print. Um, so you can still buy Volumes 1 to 5. Um, and I do recommend it. I, I really, really do. Um, and then finally, we have my biggest guilty pleasure. Like, generally everything in my collection, I don't have any problems talking about and recommending to people and enjoying wholeheartedly and being like, yes, this is a actually objectively good series. Um, this is <laughs> this is the one exception, and that's The World's Greatest First Love, uh, The Case of Ritsu Onodera by Shin Shungiku Nakamura. I have said this before, I really dislike Nakamura's other work, most notably Junja Romantica, and oh, I just, yeah, it's way tropey, it's all the tropes that I hate, and it's just not, I do not like it. Um, and I've seen all, all the seasons of the show for both that and for the anime adaptation of this series. This isn't inherently ever any better. It still has a lot of the more problematic tropes of BL. Um, but, but I have a soft spot for it. I do like more of the characters in this comparatively to um, Junja Romantica. And I don't know, <laughs> it's just one that, like, I know it's not good, but I still enjoy it a lot. Kisei and Yukina are, are lovely, they're great, love them. Um, I actually don't mind Rutsu, and yet, um, whatever his name is, the guy that he's in love with, but won't admit he's in love with, um, he... He is a very tropey, you know, um, masculine male character in, from BL, but I, I have a soft spot for childhood friends to lovers as well, which is probably why this is like normal, well, not normal, but this is why I accept this more than Junja Romantica. And uh, the third couple isn't ever really in it, so I that doesn't really matter to me. But yeah. World's Greatest First Love, um, volumes 1 to 12, I think 13 is out already as well, but who knows? I'll need to check. It's not one that's like super high on my priority list either, so I'll get it when I get it. So that was the entirety of my collection. Um, it was long, but I didn't, it, I mean, it's not nearly as long as the last time I tried to do this. Um, and hopefully this was just kind of a general overview of what was actually just in the collection, not really my thoughts or feelings or um, reviews or anything or synopsises of these titles, um, which generally you can get um, with my other videos because I talk too much about everything whenever I film uh, hauls or pickups or um, collection videos. So hopefully, hopefully um, you guys enjoyed this as a more just general overview um and yeah there will be lots more to come i'm sure watch out for the next podcast episode coming soon um as well as some first impression videos and a review or two and uh, my more general monthly haul video at the end of the month but thank you guys so so much for watching i am g from simply g I'll catch you in the next video. Bye till then.